to date all about the Rogue Raptor GT AX11000 Pro with Pico 4 and Virtual Desktop. Hi guys and welcome back to VR Essentials where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and everything about the metaverse today. Very exciting video as we are here to talk about the Asus Raptor Rogue Raptor GTX 11000 Pro series which is a new series and which has Wi-Fi 6. We're going to be using it with this guy here, the Pico 4 of course, which we're going to be streaming wirelessly to virtual desktop. We're going to be testing it with various different apps as well, including Skyrim. We're also going to be using Half-Life Alex, of course, and also Hubris, which just got an update, by the way, new patch. So let's see how it does. Let's see how it fares. Also, I'm going to show you, of course, some specs of the actual router as well. And, you know, the app, we're going to talk about this as well, the setup, all this kind of stuff. So do go to the timestamps below and skip to wherever you wish is more relevant for you in today's video. Otherwise, let's power through, guys. So, guys, some of the specs are pretty impressive. I have to admit, the first thing is that it has quad-core 64-bit CPU, 2 gigahertz times 4 cores, 64-bit to be precise, 10x faster with a 10 GE port. It also has a 2.5 GE one port. Tri-band with five, well, it has two 5 gigahertz ports and one 2.4 gigahertz. It also has game acceleration, and I will talk a little bit more about this as I did do some testing using the app. It also has the capability to do AI mesh and also AI protection with an Aura RGB, which I will show you because you can change the actual RGB patterns and all those kind of stuff with the app as well. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Now, what I was interested the most inside of this video is how it would perform compared to the Asus XT8. And do go and check out the previous videos where I did a whole bunch of different testing with both streaming to virtual desktop with the Pico 4 and also doing some car sims as well. So do go and check those out and also casting to the television. Um, so I wanted to know, you know, what were the major differences in terms of graphics, in terms of latency and all this kind of stuff. And do go and check out the links below if you really want to know all the specs of this specific Wi-Fi. But let me just show you on camera what it actually looks like raw. I mean, to be honest with you, it is a beast. Let, I mean, just check this out. Look, look at how big it is. This is very, very big, as you can tell. Pretty cool, pretty awesome. It is pretty heavy. It's at least, I would say, a good couple kg. I'm not quite sure exactly of the weight, but it feels like I could use it to do, you know, some some gym exercises with it. Now, you can see that it has all the ports there on the side as well, and I will do some superimposing of some B-roll just so that you can see, you know, exactly all the all the stuff and, and all that kind of stuff, like, really, really clearly, as you can tell. But yeah, basically, you know, it's, it's a very, it, it's quite a head-on, you know, router it, it takes a lot of space so do make sure you have space to put it somewhere for sure um but you know there's some really cool stuff about it and uh, let's let's talk about that next so in terms of the specifications we're looking at uh one 2.5 gigabit one port there's also a 110 gigabit wlan port there are four gigabit lan ports one usb 3.2 gen one port and one usb 2.0 port as well now there are eight antennas in terms of memory there is a 256 megabyte flash and one gigabyte ddr4 ram which is pretty pretty cool operating frequency we're looking at a 2.4 gigahertz and two five gigahertz uh, one and two, um, you know, where you can hook up basically. In terms of the, uh, now there is a power adapter that comes with it and also all the cables you need to hook it up, um, you know, in terms of the cat cables to hook it up to your modem as well. In terms of the weight itself, it's 2,180 grams. So I was right there. It's, you know, more than 2 kg, so it does take a little bit, a little bit of space. It is Win 11 uh, supported as well as Win 10, of course, and it has IPv6, three years warranty, and it is Wi-Fi 6 enabled. 
Now, according to the box, uh, and I quote, GTA X 11000 Pro tri-band Wi-Fi 6 router uses the latest technology to give you combined wireless speed of up to 11,000 Mbps, which is 2.53 faster than Wi-Fi 5. Wi-Fi 6 also gives you network more capacity, um, you know, with improved range and longer battery life for your devices as well. Accelerate your game from device to server. GTA X 11000 Pro provides triple level game acceleration to boost game traffic, traffic excuse me, every step of the way. So you are supposed to be, according to the box, able to get to 11,000 Mbps or 4,266 Mbps on Wi-Fi 5 802.11 AC. Um, however, we will talk about the actual Mbps that I was able to get um, with my Wi-Fi system. Now, we are going to be testing being away from the router about 10 meters with a wall and a door closed in between, which is going to be very interesting. And I will do another video separately if we reach more than 30 likes in today's video, uh, where I will actually play right next to the router to show you the differences between being away from the router and right next to it, of course. So the first thing we'll what was the setup like? Was it really complicated? I have to say that I'm very impressed with Asus's app um, that came up with it because I downloaded it when I installed, of course, the Asus XT8. And I just follow the motions, you know, I just click on the buttons there and it tells me to go here and next and next and next and just click on various different things. And it's actually very, very straightforward, very dummy proof. I was able to hook up to the uh, GTA X 11000 Pro very, very easily as well. And in order to run, because I'm running three routers at the same time, the Linksys, of course, and also the Asus XT8, and now the uh, Rogue uh, Raptor uh, GTA X 11000 Pro, and they're all running from the same modem. However, um, they're all hooked up to each other as well. So um, the actual uh, GTA X 11000 Pro is hooked up to the XT8 and running from that independently, of course. Um, so I can switch from route one router to the, to the other very easily and being able to test the various different speeds uh, at a click of the button. So the actual app is very, very friendly and you can control absolutely everything on it. It's so much different than a few years ago where you had to log into the portal online, you know, using your desktop and all this. Right now, it's very, very easy. So I have to say, whew, a lot of headache, you know, avoided uh, using the Asus app. The other thing that you can do on the Asus app as well is you can control the actual colors and not just the colors of the Rogue Raptor, but also the type of patterns that you can choose. Um, if you indeed want it to, you know, show that different LED things, if you're someone who perhaps likes that kind of added detail to your gaming setup, of course, then, you know, it can be quite fun. Uh, as you know, Rogue Rapture are very known for having these kind of special effects, um, you know, when it comes to the hardware to add a little bit more emotion, a little bit more fun, as I said, uh, in the actual gameplay as well. So again, you can turn it off as well if you don't want it on, um, but very easy, you can control absolutely everything from the Asus app itself. And the other thing I wanted to talk about is the actual gaming booster, which it has. Now, when I didn't actually use the booster, it did actually, in fact, affect, um, you know, the speed of the games, which I was streaming from the Pico 4 using virtual desktop inside of you know uh, Steam VR, especially with well most of them actually but I noticed it uh, noticed it excuse me um, when I first streamed Skyrim now with Skyrim uh, I actually downloaded a mod from Vortex which is supposed to be you know the enormous mod combining all the previous 11 years into one mod so do hit the likes if we reach more than 35 likes likes excuse me i will do another video showing you how to install vortex and everything and also installing the mod for skyrim i did notice that before i turned on the booster inside of the actual uh, rogue raptor gtax 11000 pro app that there was a lot more latency um you know when when i was using it now with virtual desktop it was a lot of touch and go with Skyrim. Uh, first of all, I did, I was able to get, you know, more or less between 420 and 800 Mbps of VR streaming. However, without the actual booster, it kept fluctuating a lot, which meant that when I was walking around inside of the various different worlds, and this could also be affected by the actual mods, of course, 
uh, in terms of the latency or anything, you know, uh, not working properly. But when the worlds would, you know, for example, load, when the building would start loading or when the trees at the back would start loading and all these kind of different things, then I definitely felt that there was more latency, you know, there was more crackling in the audio, um, the image would stop here and there just quite often, I have to admit, compared to the, G the um, uh, you know, the, the AX, uh, the other Asus, um, you know, 6600 that I did in previous videos, I definitely felt that, I don't know, it was just kind of weird, you know, but then when I s turned on the actual booster, now things made a lot more sense. First of all, the MBPS uh, that you could see inside of Virtual Desktop was much more constant and was more or less at 720 to about 940 or so. So it would fluctuate between those kind of, um, you know, speeds. So it's much, much higher speed, I have to say. The latency was about between two to four uh, milliseconds, which is a big improvement. And also when I was inside of the game now, I think this is more a problem to do with Skyrim itself and perhaps the mod as well. I do have to test it with the HP Reverb G2, or I have to test it when I'm right next to the router and see the differences. Now the graphics in terms of graphics are absolutely beautiful, I have to admit, but there was much less um, latency stoppage and also crackling inside of the audio, although it was, it was still occurring from time to time. So I went on to test another app and try to see whether it was Skyrim the issue or whether the issue was actually with the router, which wouldn't be good news if indeed that was the case. So moving on to Hubris. Now Hubris, the graphics in there, are absolutely stunning, I have to admit. Um, and there was definitely no crackling with the audio, more or less never. Like So I definitely knew that in this case, it was more of a Skyrim uh, issue having to do with loading and, you know, perhaps the mod as well, or, you know, something going on with the game engine, um, you know, compared to Hubris, where there is no issue whatsoever when it came to the actual audio. Now, in terms of the graphics, however, inside of Skyrim, there is a lot more, I would say, artifacting where things aren't as clear here and there. You could definitely tell that there was a lot more blurriness uh, in various different parts of the actual uh, game. So again, when I was inside of Hubris, I wanted to know whether it was the issue with the game or with the actual router and potential latency as well, because I put everything to super high. I have to you know, be very clear. Everything, the super sampling, everything was absolutely almost a maximum. Uh, and when it came to the uh, streaming MBPS for both Skyrim and also for Hubris, then I chose, you know, around 130 to 150, uh, which I have to say with the AX6600, I wasn't really able to go to those levels. I had to keep it to around 100 or, you know, 102 maximum before I would get, you know, some form of latency happening there. Um, so it is definitely a bump up using the Rogue Raptor GTAX 11,000 Pro for sure, where I can definitely bump it up to 115, all the way up to 150 in some games with no issues whatsoever. However, in Hubris, uh, even though I put everything to pretty much cranked it up to the maximum, uh, and I played around also with the super sampling inside of Steam VR, bumping, bumping it up from 100% to let's say 150%. Well, you know, Hubris, the game itself, again, there are some issues. Uh, in terms of the game engine or perhaps some of the resolutions in the rendering, especially when you're outside, you'll notice all the cliffs are quite blurry, but this is more of a game issue, it's not so much an issue with the actual router itself. So uh, good to know there. And also um, everything that was very close to me was very, very sharp. So very good there, very impressed. Uh, and also, as I mentioned, no crackling of the audio whatsoever when things are loading, but there are still some issues in terms of, um, I would say, you know, artifacting where there are some areas here and there which are a little bit blurry, um, you know, compared to using the HP Reverb G2, where those areas would definitely not have any issues whatsoever, I have to say. And also there are some issues also I noticed with um, some jagged edges here and there, especially on metallic edges or edges that were very straight, very sharp. Uh, then there were definitely some issues there, both in uh, Hubris and also in Skyrim. But let's talk about um, you know Half-Life Alex and what kind of experience I had uh, there because 
again, it was extraordinary how the differences were quite night and day to, uh, compared to Skyrim and also Hubris. Now, inside of Half-Life Alex, again, I put everything to ultra, uh, making sure that all the graphics were, you know, super cranked up as maximum. And again, I think it's a game engine thing because the game engine inside of Half-Life Alex is just phenomenal compared to Skyrim and also, I mean, Skyrim is, is a few years old. Let's, let's you know, uh, let, just a little reminder there that Skyrim is a little bit old. Um, but Hubris also, you could definitely compare it. Inside of Half-Life Alyx, the graphics are absolutely staggering compared to the HP Reverb G2 and also the AX um, 6600, um, you know, uh, Asus that I, that I did the actual videos uh, last week and do go and check out those videos as I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Absolutely amazing. Um, you know, the latency, there is none, absolutely none. Uh, and also in terms of the audio, again, no issues there whatsoever. No crackling, no issues. Everything is absolutely perfect. But what is even more amazing is the fact that the graphics uh, artifacting really go away compared to Hubris or compared to Skyrim like you can't even compare it it's so clear inside of half-life alex and i think it's just the fact that they put so much effort in you know making sure that they don't have all these issues um and also of course uh Guy Godin with uh, and his team with virtual desktop probably did an amazing job in terms of making sure also that adapting his technology to all these various different engines so that there are um you know as little issues as possible but i have to say that it really performed amazingly and I'm very interested to see how it's going to perform with other more modern, let's say, game engines. For example, with all the sim racing, like with AMS2, uh, with Aceta or Aceto Corsa, um, and also various other games like Beat Saber or Synth Riders or, you know, just, just other games, you know. And, and do comment below, leave a comment below, let me know the list of games you would like me to test this um, you know, specific router with because I've got it on loan. I won't have it for too much longer, maybe another month. So, you know, do put your wish list in the comments below. Let me know and I'll definitely, uh, if I have the list of games or if it doesn't cost too much, then I'll definitely download them and test them with the Rogue Raptor, um, you know, 11,000 Pro. So guys, there you have it. Really, I need to do a lot more experimentation. Of course, I spent maybe around six hours playing all the various different VR apps between Skyrim and Half-Life Alyx as well as Hubris. So do go and check out those apps as well because they are all very cool and all very different in their own genres. But do make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell after you do so because I will upload a more in-depth video. This was more of a first impressions kind of review. I definitely feel that with Half-Life Alyx, of course, definitely much better than the XT8 Asus that I did do a test with and do go and check out those videos as I mentioned before, as I was able to up the actual bit rate inside of virtual desktops, actual settings from around 100 to 130 or 140 even and not have much latency, which just shows that the gaming boosting tool inside of the Asus um, phone app to generate all those bit rates that you need to not have so much latency really does work but you do need to make sure you enable it otherwise you will have some inconsistencies and if you're away like 10 meters away with a door and a wall in between and your door is closed then you might have some issues but of course if you're right next to the router then again i need to test this um, and i will upload my findings as i do more testing all right guys well lovely to be spending some time with you really hope you had a lot of fun and you learned something here I will see you guys in another video very, very soon. Thank you so much for spending some time together. I had a lot of fun. Until next time, take it easy, stay safe in VR, and do more VR, of course. All right, take it. Talk to you later. Bye for now. Ciao.